So welcome to this video and in this video I wanted to quickly point out some differences between different types of supernova. So we're probably familiar with the fact that a supernova generally is the end point of a star's life and there's not just one type. There's a few different types but in this video we're specifically just going to have a look at type 1, type 2 and any differences between the two. So here we've got the Crab Nebula and you know it's a beautiful looking feature in the sky and if you've got a telescope looking at this is a fantastic object to have a look at. You've got really bright vibrant colours, lots of inter interesting structure there and then you've got another one here. Again you've got really nice bright colours and these are fantastic objects to have a look at for a telescope and they're all different you know, depending on their age, their type, they can look quite different um, but they make fantastic objects to look at what's left over from one of these supernovas. So not all supernovas are created equal and the example I've got here is a type 1a and a type 2. So if I suppose if you look at them here in the images yes they do look different but they wouldn't necessarily be that easy to, to you know, tell the differences visually because one is younger than the other and they obviously evolve because they're still expanding. But let's have a look at the differences between these two types. So firstly, type one, they're typically um, thermonuclear. And the example here is a type 1A. And on the video, you've got a white dwarf on the right hand side pulling material off a red giant. It's a very specific example of a supernova, the type 1A. Now the white dwarf will pull that material off and once it gets to about 1.4 solar masses you then have a supernova explosion and the reason why that occurs is it increases its mass to the point that it causes a temperature increase that approaches the ignition temperature of carbon which is predominantly what a white dwarf is made of and once that occurs you get this thermonuclear reaction and it goes supernova. So that's a big difference as to what actually causes it. Now, if you were to take the spectrum of a type 1a, you generally, or type 1 in general actually, you wouldn't see any hydrogen in their spectrum. So that's a, a key indicator that it might be type 1. They don't have hydrogen in their spectrum. The white dwarf that initiated it, they're predominantly carbon and oxygen, because they're essentially what's left over from a, a core of a solar mass star. And they don't typically leave behind a stellar remnant. So the white dwarf that caused it wouldn't necessarily survive that and be left behind afterwards. So if you were to investigate in the centre of that supernova or the remnants of it, you wouldn't necessarily find that white dwarf. Now in some circumstances, there are parts of that that are left over, so it wouldn't necessarily destroy the entire white dwarf. So sometimes they can survive, but as a general rule, not necessarily going to get anything left behind. The type 2 are from the death of massive stars. And because of that, the mechanism is different to what causes the supernova. So here you've got that central core, which is generating energy. So you've got an outward pressure, which is supporting it against gravity. Once that hydrogen fusion or the fusion in the core, because if it's a massive star, it'll be diffusing different things. Once that ceases, the gravitational force then collapses it. Um, it can overshoot something like the neutron degeneracy pressure and then you get a rebound back out through the outer layers which basically starts this supernova explosion. So it's a completely different process. It's a, it's a core collapse instead compared to the type 1. Now as a result of that, if you were to take the spectrum of type 2, you would see hydrogen. So they will show hydrogen in their spectrum and one of these massive stars the central core might not have any hydrogen, but the outer layers does have hydrogen. So there's still a lot of hydrogen in these massive stars once it goes supernova. And that is what would show up in their spectrum. Also, type 2 would leave behind a stellar remnant. So a neutron star, a pulsar or a black hole. Because of the mechanism that caused it and the core collapsed, you would be left behind with something quite dense in the centre. And with the Crab Nebula, we've zoomed in and you can see the area around the central pulsar. So the Crab Nebula does have a pulsar in its centre, which is essentially a neutron star, a fast rotating neutron star, which just sends a pulse out 
um, every rotation. So thank you for watching and if you enjoyed then you can check out some of the other videos.